Ahoy there makers! Before you spend a penny on buying a new NAS, here's two things this box did that really surprised me, and one thing I wish I'd known before I'd started copying files. Can the Ugreen DXP4800 Plus replace my Synology 1523 Plus and run Windows 11? Let's find out. In the past, I built ZFS and free NAS rigs. I daily use the Synology, and yes, I've even 3D printed a tiny snazzy NAS. Today, I'll show you the real pros and cons of the Ugreen DXP4800 Plus, who it's for, and one setting I will turn on immediately to avoid heartbreak. And for full transparency, Ugreen sent me over this DXP4800 Plus, as well as two 4TB hard drives. Out of the box, it's clean and simple. Toolless trays with locks, front ports where you want them, and a painless first boot. While UGOS Pro spins up, here's 10 seconds why this unit is interesting. Headline features you'll actually feel day to day. Four easy access bays, no drive lockings like other providers, just use what you already have. Two MVB slots for cache or fast pool, front USB and a USB-C at 10 gigabits for quick ingestion, plus an SD card slot for camera dumps. The rear I.O. has a legacy USB 2 and both 10 gig and 2.5 gig networking. And under the hood is a 12th generation Intel Pentium Gold 8505 with DDR5 and it's quiet too thanks to the big fan. There's even a HDMI port on the back for 4K media center use if that's your thing. Security isn't a checkbox, it's a workflow. You've got encryption, flexible RAID, real-time virus scanning and granular permissions. And because it's all local, you know exactly where your data lives. The software runs on UGOS Pro with apps for Windows, Mac OS, iOS, Android, TV and web. You get Docker, virtual machines. Yes, I've even spun up Windows 11 with an AI powered photo album that clusters faces, objects and scenes. And there's also a remote access through Ugreen Link. I tried this out recently when I was visiting the Isle of Jersey. This is me accessing files and also the Windows 11 desktop. I'll show you how easy it is to access your Ugreen NAS using UG Link. So to access this, we simply go to ug.link and then the name that you've given your NAS drive when you set it up. So I'm going to just type in my password. So this is UGOS. This is a Linux based uh, backend, if you like, uh, but it presents a really nice user interface via a web browser. So you can see over here, we've got files. This is where we set up access to our files. We can create personal folders, share folders, and we have user folders as well. So the user folder is as an administrator, you can see all the different users of your NAS on here. Personal folders are just unique to each individual user that's logged on. And shared folders, as you would expect, is where you can share access permissions. Very easy to create new shared folders. We simply click on the plus button and we can choose whether this is a network folder or whether this is a new shared folder. So if we created a new one, for example, let's just call this one live. We decide which volume we want this to be on. We'll have a look at volumes in a second. And then you can also choose some things like, is there a quota limit that you can uh, cap out how much capacity is used? Can you hide this in the network view? And do you want a, a recycle bin? You can also have this just for admin use only. So let's click create. And that gives us a new drive that we can now access. You can also just decide who has access to this. So for example, I could have read write and our user there, Bill, could have uh, no access. So we've now got this folder that's called live and we're free to copy files into that as we wish. Okay, let's have a look what else we have. We have a control panel. This is where we access all the different parts of our NAS drive. So for example, we could create users using the user admin or the file service. We can decide if we want this to be uh, shared over SMB, which is the Windows and Mac file sharing system. If we want this to be discoverable in a workgroup. This is part of Windows networking. We can give that workgroup a name. Workgroup is typically the default for these. We've also got options for things like file transfer, whether it's secure or basic file transfer protocol. These are switched off by default for security. We have NFS, which is a network filing system used by Unix systems. We have rsync. This is a remote synchronization protocol. I've got this one enabled because I actually use this protocol to backup files to other systems. We have WebDAV. This is a, a web-based file sharing system. And then we've also got some advanced settings there as well, such as enable WSDD2, Bonjour, which is the way that this can present itself on the network without having to have any DNS, DHCP servers. We've also got there, set up a time machine. So if you use Mac OS, you can set up one of the file shares on here to be a time machine. So you can back up your Macs to that. 
We've also got a UPnP discovery, which can also help make this device more discoverable on your network. We've got things like device connection. So I've called this one Kev's Ugreen. We have domain and lightweight directory access protocol. I've not set this one up as an LDAP server. That's a little bit beyond what I require for my own needs. We've then got the terminal access, so things like Telnet, which is a very insecure protocol. You probably don't want to set that up. And SSH, which is a much more secure protocol. This one, you can also have this one. So if you enable it, it'll actually shut it down after 10 minutes of your use. It's a way of providing quick access if you need to do some under the hood configuration of your NAS drive. Typically you just leave that alone. Hardware and power, so we've got things like the buzzer. When you switch your NAS drive on for the very first time, uh, you'll hear a little beep when it's uh, it's ready to access. When, when you're shutting it down as well, it'll also give you a little notification of that. The fan mode, you can configure the fan. Let's have a look at the settings of that. So you can make this quiet or full power or just default, whatever the default setting is for that. The fan is extremely quiet. I've actually not been able to hear it at all in my office here. The LED indicators, so again you can set the brightness of that, so if it's a bit too bright, you're in a dark office for example, you can actually lower the brightness of that. Power management, we can have balance, we can have energy saving, or we can have high performance. And then finally we've got memory compression, and this is just a way of reducing down the amount of physical hardware that you need. It can actually compress the contents of memory and therefore free up other, other memory for overall system use. Other things like time and language. I'm in uh, the UK, so we're on Greenwich Mean Time. We've got uh, the network settings, so you can set this up if you want this to be pointing at a specific DNS server, for example, you can set that up. You can have multiple gateways, all the usual kind of network things. Security, we've got all the security settings there. Indexing service, the indexing service runs automatically. So this is just a way of uh, rebuilding or regenerating the index. If you've done a, a large uh, deletion, for example, and then we've got some other information such as what the device name is, what the Ukraine link ID is, who owns the device, what version of software it's running on, and then some other information. So you can see there, it's the Intel Pentium Gold 8505 got five cores six threads it's currently at 40 just under 40 degrees c uh, we've got eight gigs of memory in there it's 500 5600 megahertz you can also see some network settings there as well so what uh, ip is this on i'm currently only on a one gigabit uh, switch so i can't make full use of the 10 gigabits that's available to us on this and then we've also got things like the mac address subnet mask how long it's been powered up for i did give this a reboot uh, three hours ago and there was a software update available to me and you can also see what model it is there as well finally we've got things like the software update like i said we updated this two hours ago so uh, there's no updates that require uh, applying there so that's the control panel then the storage so i've got two drives these are the drives that were provided to me by uh, Ukraine themselves. So these are Iron Wolf 4 ter uh, terabyte drives. So I've got two of those side by side. If we look in this storage, so you can see we've got the two drives there, hard drive one and hard drive two, and they're both being used by storage pool one. So if I go to that storage, you can see there storage pool one is set up as a RAID 1, which is a mirrored configuration. And I'm using the BTRFS file system layout. So you can see there we have, um, I've used just under a terabyte and therefore I've got 3.6 terabytes remaining to be used. If you plug in external storage, you can also access this here as well. So if you plug in, for example, a small backup drive that you only need to back up your NAS to, you could do that via this. Or if you've got like an SD card and you pop that in the front, you can also see that here as well. Now, one of the really cool features of this NAS drive is that it has an entire app ecosystem. So things like virtual machines, very easy to set up virtual machines on here. We've got things like text editing, sync and backup, We've just used the storage app there. Things like photos, music, and uh, media center. Very easy to set up and use. We've even got a web browser, Firefox there. We can run Docker containers, so you can knock yourself out with all the different Docker containers on there. So to simply install one of these, we can just go along to one that's not been installed. So for example, Jellyfin, if I click on install, it'll just ask me where we want to actually store the files for this. So we could say media, for example, and the plugin path, I've not got a plugin path set up for this. So we could create one if we wanted to. We could go to that media, create folder, and then call this one plugins. And then we can just install that. It'll go ahead and it'll download all the files it needs, set it up, and you'll be able to access it from this uh, app center. So one of the really cool things I said before is I've got some virtual machines set up on here. So if I go to my virtual machine manager, you can see that I've got Windows 11, which is actually running at the moment. I've also got a Ubuntu image as well. So it's very easy to set these up. You simply just install the 
ISO image. This is what you're going to be using to uh, boot from. So I've got on there Windows 11, Ubuntu, and Ugreen Guest Tools is a little ISO that they provide, which just helps it perform a little bit better if it's running in a virtual machine. So if we go over to connect, we can connect to this uh, Windows 11 machine that's currently running. So it connects using this uh, browser. Again, this means you can access it from literally anywhere in the world. And if I now uh, log into this, now you can actually upgrade the RAM on your you green NAS and that means you can run more virtual machines. So one of the things I was not able to do on my Synology NAS was run Windows 11. It just couldn't do this. Whereas the you green one has no problems at all. And this is to do with the, uh, the CPU and the memory that this has and also the secure chip. So here I'm in Windows 11. Now it is a little bit slow to be fair. <laughs> Now it is a little bit slow to be fair, this is just because I require a little bit more RAM to make this a bit quicker. I changed the amount of RAM allocated to the virtual machine just so that I could run more virtual machines. Okay, let's come out of that. So that one setting I said to flip, let me show you where that is. If we go into storage, we then go into hard drives and under each hard drive we go to status test. You can see here I set up a smart test. If we go to a smart test plan, you can create individual test plans. I've got two of them here, one that runs a week and one that runs every month. And this will run in the background and make sure that there is no errors that are causing your disk to perform badly. So for example, if we come on here, let's call this one every three months, every quarter, let's say it's both drives. We're gonna run a complete test. We'll also do the IHM test and we'll do the first one tomorrow. Let's do this at midnight. Apply that, we've now got an extra test on there and this will just make sure that our drive is running performantly and also if there's any errors, it'll pop up in the notification area up here that there's an issue that we need to deal with. You'll also see that this turns red, there's a little red bubble on there just to alert you that there's something you need that you need to look at. So for Windows 11, it's not really for game use. I would say this is more for office or admin use. Uh, I use it for Microsoft Project. So the apps I really like on here are like the file universal search. This makes it really, really easy to find stuff on your entire NAS drive. The uh, sync and backup, really, really useful for making copies of my NAS because you don't want to use this as your single storage, even though you've got the RAID OneDrive can fail, uh, you want to make sure you've got extra copies of your stuff just in case the worst should happen. And really you should follow the 3 2, one rule, three copies of your data on two different types of storage, maybe one's cloud and one's physical, uh, and one of those is offline, so one of those is not physically connected to your network all the time. So price-wise, when I looked at this online recently, it was £509 for the diskless version. And I would say this is for people such as family use. So your entire family can share a NAS drive. You can all have different areas on there that are private to you. You can store your family content in one area, such as your media, your TV shows, things like that, music. And you can also back up your Macs, for example, your Windows machines to this NAS drive as well and use it as a backup drive for those primary devices. Now, the great thing is with it being so quiet to run, you could have this, say, in the living room underneath the TV. You can have this basically wherever you want and it'll be really, really quiet. I'd like to know in the comments how you use the NAS drive, if you've got one currently, what model you've got, how you're finding that and whether you're looking to upgrade that anytime soon. So I hope you enjoyed this video and shall see you all next time. Bye for now.